you sure know this. And maybe this too. But do they both work together? Find out in Let's Play the Storyline Way FIFA 19. Here it is, the new situation in the FIFA series as of June 2019. Stop right there. What's going on with the live soccer television transmission standard camera perspective? The game is taking place on the entire soccer field. So why don't take a global perspective, just like in the minimap down below, with all players and the ball visible at once. Although such a small miniature isn't helpful either. Anyways, but what sense does it make to use a crop view of the gameplay also here in FIFA? Of course, soccer is about one thing only, the ball. Okay, so why this compromise with a camera. You could go one step further and exaggerate even more by zooming further in and only showing the closest area around the ball. Because this is where all the crucial action is taking place. Okay, everything you basically need. The ball, kind of a protagonist. The player controlling the ball as a co-star and all other players in the direct ball vicinity as scene participants. Very movie-heavy language. Anyways, let's watch the game in this perspective. Okay, motion sickness on its way. Zoom out really quick. Much better. But still, you could follow the game storyline just by tracking the player actions in the direct ball area without missing too much. Obviously all players are relevant in some way, even if they are not in the direct ball area. The ball is in the center of attention. So to speak, soccer is ball centric. You could put it this way. Players who aren't in a scene with a ball have no decisive role in the gameplay script. Let's stick to movies and the like. Take the Big Bang Theory. Sheldon and Lennon stay together in one apartment. Penny lives right across the hall on the same floor. The building, located somewhere in Pasadena, California, actually has five floors and 16 apartments. So have you ever Ever asked yourself who is living in the west of a building? Exactly, me neither, because that's somewhat irrelevant for the story. What's going on with this motion picture theme? The intro, of course, it's called Storyline Visualization and works as follows. Every line depicts a movie character. If characters interact in a scene, the lines are drawn close to each other and otherwise return to the initial position. In this way, all interactions of movie characters can be presented in a graph. But first of all, the graph is hand-drawn. And secondly, what does it have to do with soccer? Let's take the definition from before. The ball is the protagonist and participates in every scene. New scenes are triggered by changing the player in control of the ball. This is the main character. For example, through a pass. The ball line is drawn on this player line. Players in the direct ball vicinity, scene participants, are drawn under the line of the protagonist. All other player lines remain in the initial position. So everything is set and ready to go. At least kind of. Or maybe not. To say the truth, you will need the x, y coordinates of all players and the ball with a sufficient frequency. In order to determine whether a player is close to the ball, you should know where he or she is located in the first place. And then you can calculate the distances. Seems feasible. And how do you get the player ball coordinates from FIFA 19? Maybe like in real soccer games with image analysis similar to EPTS. This is electronic performance and tracking systems. It was indeed already successfully applied at the FIFA World Cup 2018 in Russia. Well, besides the GPS part, this would be possible, but much too tedious. Wait a moment. Of course, addresses, memory addresses. <laughs> You can simply read the XY coordinate for the player ball position out of a random access memory or RAM. There remains only a tiny little problem. You will need to find the addresses. Debuggers like Cheat Engine come for the rescue and you will need to transfer the positions out of the RAM somehow. Let's take Memory.js. Both and the graph calculations are processed on the server. And because of its popularity, let's take Node.js for that. One more thing. You will also need to depict the graph somehow, of course. Drawing it by hand gets the work done, but it's quite tired some for a whole soccer match to be honest. Browsers seem fine. Network, usability, D3GS. That's done on the client side. The browser appears to be appropriate for that. With hybrid app development environment, code runs and use it on all mobile platforms with the browser or as an app without further to do. So let's run it in Ionic. Therefore, you would be faced with the following. Although JavaScript is the language of choice here, it should be worthwhile considering C++ for computationally expensive calculations. Node.js lets you integrate this as a module easily. All right, let's see how it works. Yeah, fine. But is that all we got? Whole lot of crossings for my taste. Let's consider a simple approach and move the lines level-wise. Much better. But what's that good for? How are the lines actually aligned? You could arrange them randomly or divide them by teams. But you will end up with a lot of crossings. Because players of opposing teams, which are in a scene together with a ball, will have to cross all player lines of their own team in the first place. Not favorable. How are the players on the pitch positioned actually? It's the start formation. Though it's not exactly like that, but the defense of one team is associated corridor-wise with the offense of the other team. At least kind of. This should lead to less crossings because players of the same corridor probably will meet more often than those of others. And if that's not the case, meaning 
if players interact with other team members contrary to their designated start formation and still return to their start formation position. This should lead to longer running distances or the player corridor is left unprotected and this might be punished with goals for the opposing team. So you could adapt the start formation during the game with regard to the number of crossings. Sum that up real quick. The player lines of the graph are aligned by the start formation. Less crossings of another start formation with this optimized start formation could change the game for the better, at least for one team. Sounds far-fetched. Be that as it may, but the concept is kind of reasonable, right? One more thing. Storyline visualization is all about interactions. A little bit of abstraction and reduction here and there. And the player interactions might as well be depicted depicted as follows. Every individual has its cycle, divided by teams, and members of a scene are connected with edges. The time component will be lost of course, just an idea. Anyways, let's stick to the topic and watch the graph in action. Henri. And Rena. Jetzt haben Sie den Ball. And because it's working in the browser and the data stream can be broadcasted in a network, it will run on multiple devices smoothly just as well. Furthermore, storyline visualization seems to go well with the soccer simulation FIFA 19. But you can apply this procedure on real-life soccer too. It would be nice to see that happen. Thumbs up, hopefully it will. And if storyline visualization in team sports is too long, you can call it B-side graph as well. Because basically all tech links are shown in the graph. And that's everything for now. See you in the next one.